Hello everyone, I'm Never Doubt. Welcome to my channel. This is week 29. Now 29 is a very auspicious week because this week, uh, which I presume it is snowed, um, I'm recording this in the past and then releasing it. I mean, it's unavoidable to record it in the past. Hmm. Um, but you guys in the future, please comment below what I should not do to avoid tripping and falling down the stairs like a third time. The first two times were okay. One of them was even intentional. But the third one? Like, come on, I had a bowl of jello. Now it's all got like carpet stuff in it. Ah, it's ruined. Somebody go back in time, save me from spilling my jello. Really, like, if you got a time machine, that's what you use it for. Save me from spilling jello. It's like critical. Mm. Come on, don't be selfish. Don't save someone's life. Their time is set. My jello? No, it, it's not. It, what, its time was not set. In this episode, we are inspired by a previous comic on TikTok uh, where someone, oh, we were doing a, what was it, a Gerald robot thing? I don't know. I forget. Um, there's a robot, I think. Now, someone suggested why not make a mini robot for Gerald uh, that would be good. And I was thinking, of course, uh, such a mini robot would actually make more sense as being a mech suit for Gerald to wear. And then he could go around and zappity zap the evil robot. Now the evil robot was of course built by uh, Agent Pickle as well. Uh, Agent Pickle just builds all sorts of stuff, sets it loose, sees what it does. If it happens to decimate society, well, you know, we can make more societies, it's fine. Uh, but we're gonna try setting a six-year-old, five-year-old, I don't know, how old is Gerald? It's in the book. Go read my first book. It says how old he is. I think he's five. Um, the octopus is mature at different rates than everybody else. But uh, yeah, we're gonna throw him in a heavily powered mech suit and just launch him into the open fields uh, and see how he does against a gigantic mechatron thing. Uh, I've drawn the octopus uh, in a few other earlier drawings on my website. You can check it out. Uh, it's in the cards section like way back. <laughs> I did it for one of the Inktobers in 2017 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, so back then uh, I had the Octomech and he was kind of damaged and he was fighting like some little bunny thing that was cute but seemed to have otherworldly powers and that was pretty cool. But in this case, I don't know, we're always battling the Octo... Yeah, o Octopus? Yeah, Me Octo... Mecha, Mecha Puss, yeah. Uh, always battling him. He's not evil. He just doesn't have a specific target. <laughs> He's like, destroy everything. Nobody told me what I should destroy, so default is everything. You gotta be careful, you guys, when you're designing your death machines, always put sensible defaults in. You know, just don't, don't just leave it blank. Blank usually just means whatever. Don't do that. That's not nice. So, Agent Pickle doesn't have time to be putting in good defaults. That is his assistant's job, which we will draw later. His assistant will get on that. His assistant is some sort of a mushroom. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why Trevor is in this comic at all, other than to add a bit of visual flavor. So are you? Who here is a Trevor fan? Hands up. I don't see any. Trevor will accept that. <laughs> he's he's a humble, gentle carrot. Uh, he doesn't mind if you don't love him. But he's still a good guy. I like his hair. Uh, he could also be Charlie, for all we know. The same person. Now, this is one of those mech drawings, and I do like drawing robotic-y things. Um, I didn't put a huge amount of effort into this, partly because I had to draw it like three times, uh, or four times, and I knew that. Uh, but if I have to draw things less times, then I can put in way more greebles and bits and stuff, because uh, I'm not going to have to repeat them a million times. I do like that carrot, that mini carrot that is probably just a bomb, although I think it's like a radio walkie-talkie thing. Uh, but that is cute. I like that. I want that as a little toy. I like the Inspector Gadget vibes that this guy's got at the end here. Uh, Gerald's got the, all the different protrusions and uh, add-ons and I don't know where they came from, but this is looking cool. I like this. I want this kind of mech for myself. I wish I could go around with a heavy suit that doesn't really do anything and is blasting rockets in every direction. 
that's going to be cool. We are going to have some fun with coloring the lights uh, in the last panel because it's going to be like blaze glow on the on the mech suit. Uh, I always like doing that. It's kind of fun. Uh, as I've said before, it sort of gives you a bit of, I don't know, free visual upgrade. It's, it's not free. I mean, you have to put effort into it, but which, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, but it is fun. Uh, so you've got your normal shading, uh, and then you just slap on some glow. Uh, basically, it's it's an airbrush brush uh, to do that, and you're limiting it by the layer. So if you have a layer in a group, uh, and that group is just like your character, and you don't want like the spray paint or whatever to go off of the edge, you just chop on the you know alpha inheritance letter it has a little alpha symbol uh, turn it on and then you know your spray paint won't it'll just disappear when it goes off the edge instead of being visible uh, and so that's really good for doing you know shading and whatnot that sticks to the character it is important for like if you're doing light shading like the highlights um, I've found that I prefer that I actually affect the black outline as well uh, I want the black outline to sort of get wiped out not be black because if you've got like a high bright glow on someone that's just like blasting their face um, as this light is doing to me uh, see my black outlines around my face you can't really see them because the, the light is just a washing it out if I turn the lights down you would see the black outline around my face because I'm drawn by somebody right no wait no it doesn't make any sense when I'm doing shading that is below the black layer because I mean, it doesn't even matter because you're not going to see a difference. It's darkening things. But if you're lightening things, that's where you will see a difference. And that can sometimes be a problem because uh, you do need to be aware that you need to fully cover <coughs> that, that black line because you will see when you don't. Uh, if you only partially glow up your, your line, your side of your character, and you don't cover up the whole black line, you're gonna see that and it's gonna look bad. So you do need to <clears throat> go over the whole edge. And that's why sometimes, like if I do colored lines to go for more realism, which I don't do, uh, but I have done in the past to experiment, it is a pain. Because even if I'm darkening then, then you can see the darkening too. And I do have to like fully shade the whole side, which is annoying because then I have to start clipping and making sure I'm getting the cut of it. It's a lot more work to color the, the outline lines. Uh, so I don't tend to do it. I don't do it for the comics. If I'm going to do something like a printed poster, yeah, I might do it there, maybe. Um, but it does change my art uh, a fair bit. Um, here we have Gerald in, a, in his canopy. It's closed, and he's got a bit of a glass lid over his head. So I've put like another layer, a separate layer, but it's still under the outline layer on top of him. Uh, and then it's got some e-transparency, so you can sort of get that feel that he's like under a layer of glass, uh, which I like. Uh, and we're gonna give some slight different colors to that different edge bit uh, on the limbs, so that, you know, we get that sense that it's a robot and it has different pieces to it. Now, the background here, I am being really lazy, uh, really lazy, uh, not too proud of it, but, you know, I have to get the comic done in a timely fashion, because I do like to eventually go to sleep each day. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to put in a very lazy background. I admit it, it's not great. Uh, they do have a diagram of the Mechabus in the background. We're tracking it somewhere. I probably should have put it in a radar view. Um, I probably, it would have worked better if the room was dark for the last scene, but it doesn't make sense for it to be dark because they're in a lab. So the last scene isn't as epic as it could have been. Bleh. What are you going to do? Uh, but we're going to put thruster lines all over the place. Uh, and it uses the brush that is doing the brightening is has got a color dodge on it. I tried flipping it into different layer modes like overlay and screen, but I didn't really like the look of it. So went with normal uh, and I'm using sort of a, a distortion brush to sort of push the thrust lines back up uh, to make it look like it's blasting off the ground. I don't know if this works as well as I had in my head, but it's okay. And here we are doing the glow. Uh, so again, as I said before, we're glowing. We're making sure we're putting that above the outline layer so it does affect it because uh, we want it to be lit up as well. Uh, same thing with you know, the shine on things. You, you, you want it to be shining. Uh, and even his laser beam, it, it's on top. 
So it's important to get that glow, and I'm making sure that anything that produces light produces light, so it's casting a glow on things. Uh, so it gives it a more realistic effect. Uh, and as, as I've described before, putting this extra level of effort into your comics uh, can only reduce your engagement with people and make people not really want to read it as much, uh, because people are looking for less effort in comics to be funny uh, than more. Uh, because more effort just seems like it's some weird Disney thing that, why am I reading this? Um, whereas if it's like low effort, it's like, oh, some kid probably threw this together. This is probably a funny meme. I'm going to read it. Uh, so I don't know what I'm doing. Don't follow all my advice. Uh, we do have to get the Saurian logo in there because they, they're a big organization and they got to stamp all their stuff with their logo. Uh, and there's the assistant, the mushroom assistant that I told you about before. Uh, so he's very important and he gets everything done on time. Nothing is ever late. Not the paperwork, certainly. I will see you guys next time. Thank you for joining me. Bye.